inside, boy I'll make you feel it too All I need Wanna come around and move closer Just hearing yeah. your sweet talk yeah. As we go 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 Until we reach out so big you're hanging off the couch and you what are you doing up there falcor i don't know about them but i woke up this week deciding that well my privacy is no longer important to me building a robot I'll tell you more about that later what's up everyone guess what i did it i figured it out remember this battery that i made out of those lithium ion batteries that were inside of the battery bank. I was given a bad battery bank that wasn't working anymore. It couldn't hold the charge. I think something was either wrong with the connector or something else. I don't know. It just wasn't working correctly. Couldn't charge back up. And I took it apart, took the batteries out of it. First, I did a couple of tests that I just kind of hovered here around the house and I was noticing some issues with the battery. This was the first time that I was flying with these batteries and I thought it was all wobbly because the battery may be sagging and not having enough voltage for each of the motors, but I find out what was actually Whoa. happening here in a second. It's not, it's not happy with these motors. See, I didn't realize it was in horizon mode. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's why. I was, I was in the wrong mode. If you look at the battery status, you'll notice there it's saying low battery a lot. But these batteries just read at lower voltages that I wasn't used to seeing. It says 30 amps. And I was kind of confused as to why my voltage was dropping so quick. Yeah, these batteries are probably dead. So I just wanted to do this quick video today to maybe keep it as short as possible, but I wanted to explain some of the things that I learned about making my own battery. First time I did a little bit of a hover flight out here in my house, I realized that the battery was kind of dropping voltage way too much. It was getting hot and I didn't understand why. I know that I had wired everything up correctly and it just seemed like it wasn't working right for me. So right now all this is is six of those batteries that were inside the battery bank basically connected together with some soldered wires and I saw a lot of videos online that basically said these battery packs will get you anywhere close to maybe a 20 minute flight and the regular LiPo batteries that we use for the drones are generally going to keep you in the air about like five to maybe eight minutes. Basically the big difference is those batteries are made to be able to to put out a lot of power fast. So these lithium ion batteries are not really made to discharge a lot of that energy really fast, but they're made to hold a lot of energy, but it just lasts a lot longer if you discharge it slower. So the point is you don't wanna take these batteries and try to do a bunch of crazy freestyle flying because these batteries are not gonna like that. You're probably not gonna be able to, and as soon as you hit full throttle, your quad might do some weird things because it doesn't have enough power to give as much thrust as you're asking for. So this is more for like cruising around, trying to do long range flight where you're maybe flying around like in the mountains or you just wanna explore. You don't wanna go doing anything too crazy. This I found is probably a really good battery pack to do like my first flight with around a new area to kind of get a feel of where I can fly. At the end of this video, I'm gonna post the flight that I did with this battery pack today that basically made me realize it's finally working the way it should. So I wanna kind of explain a couple problems I had, how, to, how I solved them, and you know, hopefully this can help somebody else who's trying to build their own battery. So let me take this apart real quick. And as I'm taking it apart, I'll explain a couple things here to you guys. So I started doing some research online to try to figure out why. And the first thing I found that kind of made sense to me, most people who put together these batteries are gonna use nickel strips. There's tons of other videos on how to build these batteries. So I'm not gonna get too detailed on 
what I did to actually build it. I think you guys watched my channel pretty much saw it on the live streams. This is the battery pack here without the blue painters tape I had around it. The only reason why I put that there is it is temporary. This is capped on tape holding them together. And these are some 3D printed parts that I made on that printer behind me. So if you take a look at how I made this battery, you'll see that it's basically just some wires soldered on to connect them all to make it a 6S battery. Did a flight around in the house and it was just kind of hovering around and it looked like my battery level was dying as of maybe like five minutes of flying, which didn't make sense to me because these things are supposed to last like 20 minutes. So I started um, I started looking into like what might be wrong. And the next day, just to be sure, I did another quick flight where I just flew around outside. And the first thing I noticed was the quad was like all wobbly, didn't have enough power to keep it up in the air. And the battery, again, just was getting hot and just didn't seem like it was all right. Um, I spent the next couple days just looking online, trying to find some more information on what might have went wrong with the battery pack. And one of the things I saw was that the nickel plates that you put on uh, a lot of people usually just spot weld them on I don't have a spot welder at the moment I'm gonna eventually make one for myself but right now um, I figured I would just solder it on kind of test it out see if I could get it to work by just doing it this way because either way you're connecting the batteries together so I figured it can't be that big of a deal right wrong those nickel strips they're able to put through a certain amount of amperage per each one and one of the videos that I found online was talking about how if you double them up, you can get the extra amperage you need. This battery. Well, then I'd have to double up my nickel strips, one on top of each other, giving me eight strips, each capable of five amps each, for a total capacity of 40 amps being pulled across these nickel strips. So this got me thinking that maybe the wires that I use have too much resistance, whether the material they're made from or maybe the length that I cut them at. I wasn't sure. I just knew that maybe something was up where the batteries weren't transferring the energy as fast as it needed to to keep my quad up in the air. So I went back to the drawing board, took the battery apart again, added in extra wires because I figured if you can add in ne extra nickel strips, to give it the extra amperage it needs, why not just add a couple extra wires? I saw some other people who actually wired their batteries together like I did, do the same thing where they added multiple wires. And that kind of made sense to me. It's like, okay, so now that's gonna help avoid some of that resistance you get with just using one wire. It's probably why it was warming up. Went ahead and did that, did another test flight and noticed that it was actually flying a lot better. The data sheet basically said that these can be discharged to about two volts. And they say you're not really supposed to go down in two volts, like to keep the battery alive longer. You maybe want to stop flying sooner than that. But I was thinking maybe like 2.5 or something, right? So normally with a LiPo, you land at about 3.5 a cell. This, I'm gonna, I decided I'm gonna land maybe closer to around three a cell just to kind of give it some leeway so that I'm not discharging the battery all the way and having any kind of problems killing the life of the battery. So today I was flying in a new spot that I was hanging out with Luna and I realized that, holy crap, this thing was able to keep my quad up in the air, point where when I finally landed, I was still at about 3.1 a cell. It was just getting way too dark, so I ended up just landing. I figured I'll go back for another time. And let me just show you real quick what it actually looks like on the drone. Once I actually get the nickel strips spot welded onto the batteries like it's supposed to be, then I'll put this together for real. The way that this is made, the 3D printed parts, it has these little holes on the bottom and you can stick zip ties through it to hold them down together. So this is basically how I was flying it on the drone, even though you can lay it down on its side as well. And the drone actually flew fine with it. It was able to hold it up. I didn't have any issues. If you've never flown with lithium ion batteries, definitely give it a try. I was scared myself making them. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, but you know, if you put the wires on wrong, you could essentially make these batteries catch on fire. Throwing the heated fragments all over the yard. <laughs> make sure you double check everything over and over again. I know a lot of you guys who fly FPV are just crazy about, I, wanna, I don't even wanna add an extra gram to my, I've flown this with this thing and a GoPro and whatever, and it flies just fine. Build your ship powerful, you won't have that problem. All right, let me get this weighed, and we got the whole quad here, and how much are we? 25.7 fluid ounces. That's what you're getting. Freaking change. All right, with the GoPro and this battery, we're getting 857 grams, 856 grams, 318 grams for the battery. And here's another 6S 
lipo. So you see this is 228 grams, this is 318. So you get about 100 more grams on that battery. I've seen some people who get these batteries to weigh less, especially if you're not using a bunch of wires and solder like I did. So we'll see how much it actually changes when I get those nickel strips and spot weld them in. I'll let you know how it performs, if it performs way better. So enjoy the video. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Can't wait to show you guys what else I'm working on, but for now, peace out. Never mind, this video's been long enough, so I think you should just look in the description instead, and I'll put a link in there, and then you can watch all of these long-ass videos that I did where I was just testing this battery out. Oh yeah, and I finally got a copy of the new shirts that I made, and they actually came out way better than I thought. I wanted to make sure that they actually looked good when they came in this time. Sometimes I know Teespring can be a little bit iffy with the quality of the prints. These actually came out really good. I'm really happy with them, so if you want to get yourself a copy, I'll put the links in the description below, and I hope you guys like them. Okay, bye!